Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 1. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 8, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so Superman Lois was the only show on last night, as you guys know, The Flash wasn't on, it's on like a mini one week break, it's going to be returning next week with Cisco's last episode, so be on the lookout for that, obviously we're going to be making lots of videos in the lead up to that, and on the day we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown on the night, and then obviously my Superman Lois review will come right after. So yeah, let's talk about this week's episode, it was really really good. It was very impactful, there was a lot going on, we had some big reveals and some big links to Crisis, and we're going to break it all down in today's video, so I've got quite a few notes, and we're going to start off at the start of the episode. So we begin with Lois sitting down with a therapist, and this person has a link to, you know, her family in some way, and so throughout the episode we keep on going back to this at multiple points, and it kind of reveals bit by bit more and more about what Lois is there for. And you aren't given all the information at first, however, bit by bit you sort of see where this kind of confrontation that she's talking about actually happened, and you realise, oh, like this point in the episode at the start is at the end of the episode, or nearer towards the end, and she's recounting on what happens and what we're about to see, and... This is all branching off of Jonathan nearly dying, and she goes a little bit crazy, and it's very, very hurtful for her, and it's basically taking a huge emotional toll on what happens in this episode. And so it's revealed that she has in the past gone through a miscarriage, which has heavily affected her, but even more than she thought initially, because things are brought up in this episode, and so they were going to name their daughter, and it was confirmed to be a daughter, and they were going to name their daughter Natalie, after Lois's grandmother. And so this all comes to the forefront as Jonathan and Lois search through John Henry Irons' van, and Lex's AI brings up old photos where it's revealed that on his earth, John Henry Irons, and it's revealed to Lois as well, is married to Lois, like an alternate version of her, and they have a daughter called Natalie, and so this is obviously the big thing that brings up that kind of emotional turmoil within inside herself, because she has all of this kind of doubt, regret, whatever the right word is, within inside herself, she blames herself for what happened to her daughter, who obviously didn't make it through childbirth, and it's all very heavy stuff, especially for the CW, like, I don't think there has been really any recent storylines that have been this hard hitting and like I think you know Lois specifically throughout this episode went through the ringer and I think Bitsy Turlock did a fantastic job and I think it's definitely the hardest thing that I've seen this season for any actor to pull off so props to her she did a fantastic job okay so on that computer it's revealed through articles that on John's earth that being John Henry Irons his Superman, the evil Superman, was just the same as our Superman, although with a black suit. And so, it seemed like for a while, he was just a hero, he was definitely Metropolis's hero, he wasn't always like a version of Superman who is evil, he was actually good for a long time. However, it's revealed that he was turned by the Kryptonian army, created by Morgan Edge, and so he chose his own kind, aka the new Kryptonians, over humanity, and so John would go around and kill the other new Kryptonians on his earth, but he couldn't stop Black Suit Superman in time. So Evil Superman was able to reign free, and that is what he is so worried about is going to happen on this new earth that he has found. So big crisis links right here because they reveal John Henry Irons' origin story of basically how he got to this earth, and what happened in the minutes and, you know, the hours leading up to this event. And so, we have this big fight scene, obviously still, aka John Henry Irons doesn't fight back because he's inside his aircraft or his spaceship, and so you have evil Superman outside, he is trying to break through the windows using his heat vision, he's obviously installed some sort of protection, as you know with the van, it's very high tech and it's lined with lead, that means, you know, Superman or any Kryptonians can't get through. So I'm presuming he did a similar thing 
to his spaceship as well, and that's why he can get through. And so John flies towards what I suppose is the antimatter wave, because there is this surge of red light that goes all over, and we've been told in the past that his origin of how he got to Earth Prime is linked to Crisis on Infinite Earths. So I'm nearly 100% sure that was the antimatter red light wave that you saw. Okay, so Evil Superman turns, he looks at it, and then he stops attacking as John enters what could be the time stream as he slips between his Earth, which I don't think has been confirmed like what specific Earth it was, but let's just say it was John's Earth, it was somewhere out there in the multiverse, but he enters the time stream due to the antimatter wave and he is somehow able to get to Earth Prime and that is his origin of how we got here in the first place. We've been waiting for that for a while, but now we've got the official reveal and it was a great scene. I really loved it and I was super engaged the whole time and I thought it was totally what we kind of expected, but it was surprising in the way that like he was being attacked by evil Superman rather than him just like escaping because he knew the Earth was going to be destroyed or anything. It doesn't seem like he was notified of anything around Crisis. And so he obviously was a target for evil Superman, as he was furiously trying to stop him from leaving, it seems like. So did John previously find a way out of this Earth? Because he knew that this Earth was destroyed, there was no way that he was going to be able to save it by killing all these individual Kryptonians, because by this point there are so many different versions. Like, I mean, look at all the different Supermans you saw last episode. And so did he know he could escape if he went into the antimatter wave, that is the question. It seems like he was definitely trying to escape, but did he know he could go to another Earth if he went towards the red light? That is the question. I don't know right now, I don't have a specific answer, but keep that in your minds and we can theorize about it more in the comments down below. So, moving on, now back to Earth and what is happening with Sarah. So, she has a few scenes with Kyle and they have some nice time together, it's pretty good, but he ends up disappointing her as he doesn't turn up for her audition that they heavily practiced together throughout this one day. And this is because Leslie La told him that he got offered a spot on Morgan Edge's team, and I obviously put that in quotation marks because he is being lured in to actually become one of these new Kryptonians. But Lana didn't tell him, so there is that confrontation, and seems like he's been out drinking and he's very kind of taken aback by what he's been told and he's very upset that Lana didn't tell him the truth basically. And so Jordan backs up Sarah as he doesn't show up, that being Kyle, at her performance and so he reveals he can play the piano, he plays the piano and it's a pretty cool scene. But whilst this is happening you have the stuff that's happening with Jonathan and Lois. And I really like this pairing because normally it's like the kids and then you have Lois doing her journalism, then Superman doing the Superman stuff. So you have these like little segments of teams and it was nice having that kind of crossover with Jonathan and Lois. And so in this one scene, Jonathan is nearly killed as he explores Captain Luthor's or the stranger's van and he sees his mum's death by evil Superman that we saw last episode. So he saw that news clip and this is kind of shocking to him and this is obviously gonna affect him. However, he gets stuck in the van and there is no way out. The AI system is going crazy, it's about to shoot at him, but then Lois is able to call Superman and Superman saves him in the nick of time and it's at this point that you get what they were talking about in that therapy session that we keep on seeing with Lois and Lois gets extremely mad at Jonathan and it's because she's scared of losing him just like she lost her daughter. So it's quite, you know, poetic in the way that it's done. And obviously the scene is very eruptive and Lois is extremely mad and Jonathan is heavily affected by it. So that's kind of the explanation of that segment of the episode where you had Lois and the therapist. So whilst this is happening, we have John Henry Irons who has been captured and you get the introduction of these two different lieutenants or two different people in General Lane's army. And so one guy, Lieutenant Rossetti, is a new Kryptonian, it's revealed. This was quite a shocking scene. He kills the other guy and his eyes light up with heat vision. So it looks like Edge has got people in high and unsuspecting places. But he tries to kill Superman as he lures him down into room 7734, which means hell. 
and it's quite the literal hell for Superman as down there they have experimental uses of kryptonite which makes Clark ultimately extremely mad at General Lane and it's nice to see that General Lane kind of takes Superman's side even though he's still being a bit stale and a bit like tough against him because you know oh the job over you know trusting someone is what he's all about however he does take some steps because he realizes you know he needs to align with the good rather than like aligning with anyone else so anyway you have Rossetti who is killed as John Henry Irons uses like a kryptonite spear and this is something that he uses on his earth to kill Kryptonians and so he almost kills Superman but just in the nick of time once again but this time it's Lois who saves the day and Lois is able to bring some of her advice that she was told about earlier in the episode by the therapist and she's able to stop John from killing Superman who is this close from doing the act. And so by the end of the episode we have a kind of truce between John, Henry Irons and Superman for now and so he erases the Luther identity of the AI now he is John Henry Irons to the AI he goes driving off and so they will potentially need him definitely sometime in the next few episodes as Morgan Edge's plans amp up even further and you start to see a proper impact of this army as it's formed as these people start becoming new Kryptonians so that's about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you did enjoy the video I love this episode and I can't wait to talk about Superman Lois again next week. Leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it, turn on notifications and subscribe if you're new. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.